Blessed be the one, holy, and living God. Today's hymn is Simple Gifts. Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free, tis a gift to come now where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in a place just right, twill be in the valley of love. Let us pray. Grant us, O God, the desire for a sound mind in a sound body, the love of justice and the courage to stand for it, the gift of enduring friendships, the strength to serve our companions, and steadfast loyalty to whatsoever things are true. Amen. I ask your prayers for all who live and work in the borough of Pottstown. I ask your prayers for all who govern and hold positions of authority especially the mayor and borough council, the governor, and the president. I ask your prayers for all whose lives have been touched by tragedy, whether by accident or by deliberate act. I ask your prayers for the sick. We pray for all suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and for all risking their lives to care for others. I ask your thanksgivings for those celebrating birthdays in this part of the week. Atta, Maxwell, Olivia, Mia, Emily, Anna, Keisha, Marcus, Annabella, Leo, Dylan, Alan, Carrie, Mr. Daracola, Ms. Kakaska, Mr. Artem, Ms. Rooney, Mr. Endy, and Ms. Mauger. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will for your name's sake. Amen. Our speaker this morning is the headmaster. Mr. Lehman has been the headmaster at the Hill since July, 2012. Mr. and Mrs. Lehman have two sons who graduated from the Hill, 
Mitch in 2016, and Griffin in 2018, and their daughter Avery is a senior at Blair Academy. Mr. Lehman. When I was in my freshman year of college at Dartmouth, and not much older than most of you, I was planning to be a film studies major. I had taken a filmmaking class during my senior year of boarding school and was sure I was destined to be the next big time Hollywood director. I registered for Film Studies I, Introduction to Film, and showed up for the first day of classes only to find that the course was oversubscribed and that freshmen were likely to be the first ones to get cut. A new professor named David Ehrlich introduced himself to me as I left the class and convinced me to sign up for a new course, Film Studies 19, Introduction to Animation, promising that I would still learn a lot about filmmaking fundamentals. After several initial flipbook animation assignments, I quickly realized that I had almost zero talent for drawing and was ready to quit the class altogether. Professor Ehrlich offered me a block of plasticine clay and encouraged me to consider stop motion animation, or claymation, as it is commonly known. The only problem was that claymation required several hours of uninterrupted time with the only 16 millimeter animation camera that Dartmouth owned, as opposed to the flipbooks that could be created on one's own time and then filmed in a few minutes. Professor Ehrlich said I could use the camera from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. if I was willing to work overnight. It turned out that I had a knack for molding and sculpting clay, and I enjoyed the solitude in that small animation studio after hours. I was hooked and took several other animation and filmmaking classes in the following terms. In my sophomore year, I completed an independent study with Professor Ehrlich and created a short claymation film called Cinder Elvis, a clever parody of the classic Cinderella tale with Elvis Presley going to the ball, leaving behind a blue suede shoe and eventually getting tracked down by the beautiful princess. It actually won a few film festival awards and I was now really hooked on animation. Needless to say, there weren't many six foot two Ivy League football playing geography majors that were making claymation films in the wee hours of the night. At the same time, or at that time, I had a lot of explaining to do to my family and friends. In the spring of my junior year, I was chosen to be a senior fellow at Dartmouth. Unique to Dartmouth and highly selective, a handful of senior fellows are appointed each year by the president of the college to complete projects, quote, for which the intellectual scope and breadth of imagination goes beyond that which can be accomplished by taking courses offered in the existing curriculum, end quote. Senior fellows don't have to complete their major or take any classes whatsoever. They receive a substantial project budget, get a campus office, or in my case, a private studio, and much to my parents' delight, do not have to pay any tuition. My project, a 12-minute claymation dark comedy film called Patronized, wherein our protagonist is Elmer, a starving artist who seeks funding from a foundation for his abstract sculpture, only to be turned down because his work is deemed too provocative and controversial. Against his better judgment, Elmer eventually gives in to the wishes of the foundation and tries to change his sculpture to be more acceptable. Elmer does everything he can to tame the sculpture even trying to transform it into various classical sculptures such as Michael, Michelangelo's David, Auguste Rodin's Thinker, Frederick Auguste Bartholdi's Statue of Liberty, and Daniel French's Abraham Lincoln. The battle with the sculpture takes its toll on Elmer. He returns to the foundation as an elderly, hunched over man, while the resilient sculpture has rebounded to its original plain cuboid shape. Finally granted funding for this now unobjectionable masterpiece, Elmer tips the cuboid over and it is revealed to be his coffin. He climbs in and closes his lid, the lid on his unfulfilled life, to which the foundation board fittingly responds that they can no longer fund such distasteful performance art. Pretty dark stuff for a college senior. 12 minutes. 
My entire senior year in college was devoted to making this 12-minute film. Sounds like a pretty chill way to spend my final year of college, right? Not so much. Allow me to explain the process of stop-motion stop animation to you. First of all, the first step in an animated film is writing the screenplay, drawing storyboards, recording all of the voiceover dialogue, music, and sound effects, and then developing what is known as a shot log. A shot log is a second-by-second spreadsheet-style roadmap for the animator. Each page represents 24 frames, or one second, of 16-millimeter film. On the x-axis of each page are the 24 columns for each frame to be shot. The y-axis rows represent the various characters in the scene and their foot and hand positions, mouth positions for dialogue, and any other camera motions, sounds, or prop actions. My 12-minute film translated into 720 seconds, or a 720-page shot log, approximately two inches thick. It also meant that I had to run 17,280 frames of 16-millimeter sound tape, a total of 432 feet of film, this is what it looks like, film, through a contraption, old-fashioned contraption, called a Steenbeck editing table, frame by frame. I would listen to each frame and record and enter the phonetic sounds or music beats on each row and column of the shot log. Tedious work that took weeks and weeks before even shooting a single frame on film. Second, most of the animation you see today, even the three-dimensional type, is computer animation. The character, scenery, and corresponding motion is created by animators using specialized software. Unfortunately, none of that existed in 1994. I had to build and sculpt the characters, construct the sets, and move the characters, camera, and lens by hand 17,820 times, multiplied by however many characters or other props were moving at the same time. Now, here is Elmer, or actually, Elmer's armature, which I designed and fabricated in the Dartmouth machine shop with the assistance of several engineering students that I knew. Plasticine clay tends to lose its shape under the hot lights for 16 millimeter filming at the time. No LEDs back then. And this metal armature kept Elmer's body from melting even though I still had to build hundreds of Elmer faces and hands, which would melt every 10 to 20 seconds, or every 240 to 480 frames of movement and footage. I also built three sets. Elmer's workshop, the foundation interview hall, and the bar where Elmer would go to drown his sorrows. Each set was built on top of an elevated floor that was four foot by eight foot sheets of plywood. I drilled hundreds of holes into each floor with removable dowels in each, uh, in each. To keep Elmer's armature from collapsing as he moved across the sets, I installed machine cap screws into his shoes and screwed bolts from underneath the set, removing and replacing the dowels with every step. The sets also had four removable walls so that I could shoot the scene from any angle. And I spent a lot of time at the Dartmouth Woodshop developing these sets through trial and error. We didn't have YouTube or DYI instructions for how to make claymation films and sets back then. After nearly six months of screenwriting, pre-production, sound recording, and editing, building the shot log and armature and set construction, I was finally ready to shoot the film. For each frame, I had to shift Elmer, the sculpture, the foundation board members, and any other props in the scene at 1 24th of the desired movement per second. That could include multiple movements per frame, mouth, hands, feet, body, etc. The camera itself might be moving, tracking in or panning on a special device that I had to construct, or the lens might be zooming in or out at small intervals crawling around on the floor underneath the sets, replacing dowels and, with screws to assist Elmer's motion, 
looking at my own mouth, making different phonetic sounds and recreating that motion on Elmer's face. Can you picture all of this? Even though I had my own camera by this point, I still worked overnight from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. as a matter of habit and to avoid distractions. A good night of shooting, 12 hours, produced eight to 10 seconds of usable footage. That translated into three months of filming seven days per week to complete the entire film. Every once in a while, some other fellow film students would stop by my studio to see what I was up to. While I didn't know it at the time, two of my regular onlooking classmates were Phil Lord and Chris Miller. That duo went on to create Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, The Lego Movies, 21 and 22 Jump Street, Solo, and How I Met Your Mother, just to name a few. I probably should have spent a little more time getting to know them, but who could have known? There was, of course, also no way of truly knowing whether these painstaking video shoots would actually pan out. This was, again, photographic film, not immediately rewatchable re video, and after every 60-second reel, approximately one week's worth of work, I would mail, yes, mail, the film canister away to be developed by a film lab in New York City, only to be returned a week later. Delayed gratification, or perhaps catastrophe. Fortunately, the first 10 minutes of filming went well, with no major issues. But then, disaster struck in the 11th minute. This was the most complicated scene as Elmer recreated one famous sculpture after another, morphing seamlessly from one to the next. Just imagine me with these large football lineman hands sculpting David or the thinker one 24th interval at a time. After nearly two weeks of filming this scene, I triumphantly sent it off to New York and moved on to the final, much more straightforward minute of the film. When the 11th minute footage returned, I watched it with Professor Ehrlich. I was satisfied, but he was not. It's too quick, Zach, he said. The transitions between sculptures are a blur. You need to do it again, more slowly, more carefully. Do it right this time. You've come this far, you can't settle now. I can still hear his words. You need to do it again. More slowly, more carefully, do it right this time. You've come too far, you can't settle now. He was right, but I was stubborn and quite frankly, ready to be done. The film was nearly complete. I was ready to do the final editing, mix the sound, hop on a train to New York and complete the color correction at the studio and premiere the film for my family and friends, graduate. I could see the light at the end of the very long and tedious tunnel. I took the night off. I tried to sleep, but at that point, I could only sleep during the daytime. <laughs> It was a restless night as I had to make a big decision. Use the existing shot and hope nobody would notice or do it all over again. What would you do? The next day, I trudged up to my studio and found my second wind to redo the scene. This time it took three weeks to shoot. Three weeks, seven days a week, 12 hours a day. When the developed film came back, it was perfect. Professor Ehrlich gave me a thumbs up and I collapsed from exhaustion and slept for days. I made the trip to New York City a week later, assembled the final cut and held a premiere to a packed theater and received a standing ovation from my closest friends and family. A year later, ironically while I was in law school, patronized won an Academy Award for Best Student Animated Film. In the end, I did it right and was rewarded for my resilience. 409 days ago today, Governor Wolf announced the closure of all non-life-sustaining businesses in Pennsylvania, including the Hill School. In just 26 days, the Hill Class of 2021 will graduate and jump in the Dell. 
That's 435 days, 62 weeks, 14.3 months, or 1.2 years that our city on a hill has been living through various permutations of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've done a lot of things well over that time, and it's taken an, an enormous amount of planning, dedication, and effort. We spent months in pre-production last spring and into the summer, creating our own version of a shot log that had to cover every detail of 29 weeks of school. We built our own sets, rearranging furniture and buildings, adding signage, developing technology tools, erecting tents, hiring staff, and establishing safety protocols. In late August, we put our plan to the test and haven't looked back. It hasn't been perfect, but our overall results have been extraordinary. As we look ahead to the next 26 days, and we all see that light at the end of the tunnel, I am reminded of Professor Ehrlich's words. You need to do it again, more slowly, more carefully, do it right this time. You've come this far. You can't settle now. Let us join together to ensure a successful end to this astonishing year, especially on behalf of our sixth form. Nothing will be sweeter than having every single one of them jump in the dell. And nothing will be worse than a careless or selfish action between now and then that takes that special rite of passage away from any one of them. Keep your masks up, keep your distance, complete your wave checks, stay home or go to the wellness center if you aren't feeling well. Don't cut corners, do it right. You've come this far, you can't settle now. Thank you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Please click the link below this chapel talk if you'd like to watch Patronized. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.